Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited today. My name is Tiara. I am one of the co-founders of Grassroots, and I am here with Brittany Carbone of Tonic. Again, as I just mentioned to her, CBD royalty. We are so, so, so excited to have Tonic and Tricola as one of our brand partners and farm partners. So we'll go a little bit more in depth into how those two are intertwined. But first, I want to just start with the story behind Tonic, because I know that there's bit and pe bits and pieces out there, like on your website, but I think it's just so, so um, interesting how you came about Tonic, because it's like from your own use and yeah. your, you know, um, own um, issues dealing with anxiety, depression and whatnot. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about how Tonic came to be. Yeah, like you said, it's um, it really was born out of necessity, uh, like all the, the best inventions, right? Uh, yes. And that's really, I was looking for something that could help me the way that cannabis always had, because cannabis, since the first time that I, you know, smoked out of like a homemade bong when I was 15, I was like, <laughs> this stuff is for me, you know, and yeah. I mean, like, it really did, you know, um, help to kind of just make me feel normal, um, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just something that I, I always like... I kind of never thought twice about it. after the first time I smoked cannabis, I was just like, this is medicine for me, you know, right. and um, it was really just kind of coming to the point, though, uh, that I was working as a personal trainer, I was working super long hours, um, you know, clients at 5am clients at 8pm and right. all hours in between. And uh, when you're a personal trainer, you got to be on right like right. Nobody wants like a trainer who's like down in the dumps, sleepy like, like trainers up. don't get sleepy exactly yeah, right. you, gotta, you gotta really be able to turn it on and like be able mm -hmm. to kind of access that energy and it was just getting really really hard for me like as a, an introvert by nature um you know it's kind of draining for me to do that to begin with but yeah when like my anxiety and depression would really flare up it became like increasingly difficult for me to be able to manage that lifestyle so the issue that I was having with um kind of just uh, dosing myself with with cannabis and THC like I usually would was you know it was just not a consistent experience um, right. that's just a, a kind of a downside of not being in like a, a recreational or you know kind of having a good medicinal program in New York was right like relying on what, whatever my dealer was giving me right yeah. and that was just kind of sometimes having a couple of puffs of that joint before a client would be fine mm -hmm. Another time, I'd either get really sleepy or I'd well, yeah, I'll get way too high to be able to. Right, right. Like, so you're I'm like, go ahead, go ahead. Exactly, like, <laughs> just like completely dazed out, you know. So it's like it just wasn't really functional for me to be going about my day, especially because of the fact that I was working such crazy hours. You know what I mean? Like, it just wasn't feasible for me to go about my day, you know, smoking all day. Um, I was, so I was mm. just desperately looking for something that could help me the way that cannabis always had but without the high, something that was more workday friendly. So when I started to learn about CBD from a friend of mine who was out West uh, working in the cannabis industry and okay. you know, kind of that's how he uh, learned about it and was telling me about it. I was skeptical about it at first, to be honest with you. I was like, it's a fake weed. Like, I don't yeah, you called it the fake weed. Yeah, yeah I, I was like, that. yeah, I was like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like if I'm smoking weed every day, enthusiastically, right. why do I need to supplement with more weed? Like, I don't, right. I don't get it, right? right? And that's really when I started to kind of understand the endocannabinoid system and how mm -hmm. cannabis works with us a little bit more. Um, just kind of, my friend was telling me like, no, 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 like this, the difference between THC and CBD, right? right? The fact that what I was getting from my dealer and smoking every day had no CBD in it, had all THC, and that CBD kind of works a little bit differently with your body. Right. That was kind of like my first intro to like, anything just kind of more, uh, you know, kind of digging deeper than surface level when it came yeah. to cannabis consumption. Right. And then yeah. it was really not, in, it wasn't until I actually tried CBD. Like after that conversation, I went out to the store, got completely ripped off, uh, had to pay $90 for a 300 milligram tink glycerin tink like, just, yeah. you know, and it was just, uh, but Hey, I tried it out. And it was really surprising to me how well it actually worked. And it was like mm -hmm. one of my clients who actually said to me like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you so happy today? What do you want? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, what, why am I in such a good mood today? You know, and like, I'm like not feeling tired, like I'm feeling mm -hmm. good. And uh, I was, you know, the only thing that was different was that CBD, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's really was like my, what kind of made me want to learn even more about it. Right. So I was like, I started to pay attention after that. I really started mm -hmm. to pay attention to how it was making me feel when I did take it. And I was noticing something beyond just my anxiety being curbed. I was noticing 
better workout recovery, yeah. you have better sleep patterns, like mm-hmm. there's all other, you know, all these things that CBD can do. I was yep. really floored by it, honestly. And that's what really made me dig a lot deeper into how this is working. Like, okay, now I understood the difference between THC and CBD, why I would need more, mm-hmm. but how is CBD actually doing what it's doing? And right. that was like really when I was getting this much deeper understanding of the endocannabinoid system and CBD's role in it, I was starting to make the connection between CBD and more traditional adaptogens like ashwagandha. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, ashwagandha is something that, you know, I was using as, you know, one of these, one of the things I was trying out to, Mm -hmm. you know, replace my my cannabis throughout the day, but also something I would even use as like a a pre-workout, you know, it really helped my energy and endurance and focus. And, you know, I was starting to realize that CBD works in very similar ways to these adaptogens like ashwagandha, but they take uh, kind of different pathways to get to the same end goal, that end right. goal being homeostasis, right? Our mm-hmm. restoring and maintaining our body's ideal state of balance. But it, they do it a little bit differently, right? They just kind of activate different pathways to get there. So the idea was combining them would double down on each other's effects and be able to create an even more efficient and effective and integrative uh, plant-based wellness solution to help curb anxiety, to help manage stress, and to bring you back to that baseline. Because mm-hmm. honestly, what you know, I was seeing across the population of all my clients and, and with myself as well, is that we're always trying to dig ourselves kind of out of a hole, right? Like we're, you know, we're so stressed out all the time. We mm-hmm. have so much going on that like, it's just building any kind of like wellness routine kind of just feels like you're just trying to, you know, get on level ground, right? Yeah. You're just trying to dig out of that hole. So what things like CBD and adaptogens can do is bring you to that baseline, bring you to that level ground where you can actually start to build a foundation, like where mm-hmm. you have that foundation that you can actually build, you know, greater health and wellness. Upon. Right. right. Absolutely. You're not just, you're not just kind, of claw, kind of claw your way out from the underground. You're actually yep. trying to build at this point. Right. So yep. that was really, um, when I started to combine the two, mm-hmm. that was really like the, the aha moment, the light bulb moment that like kind of created tonic. And that's yeah. my art. OG tonic. Uh, that's how it got its name. It's the original blend that started it all. It's uh, yes. a blend of CBD and ashwagandha, black seed oil. And um, yeah, it was really amazing um, seeing how it wasn't just, these results weren't just isolated to, right, to, to you. my own personal experience. Right. I yeah. love that. I started to you know, share it with my clients and um, the results were replicated with them. And that's really when I knew that this could be something, that this mm-hmm. could be something that I could help people on a much larger scale, because that was always my passion helping yeah. people, right? Like mm-hmm. I would say like being a personal trainer and a health coach, it wasn't because like, I absolutely loved working out and I loved being in the gym. It was because mm-hmm. I loved helping people, you yeah. know what I mean? And like, that was really always my passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, obviously I'm passionate about cannabis as well. So it's yeah. like a, a, a kind great of blend for me, like, yeah, to yeah. Be able to channel both of those things and be able to really, um, do something positive, uh, with the passions that I have. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, you know, for me, it was really um, your whole story and background in the health element that even drew me to you when I had my CBD company. So for those who don't know who are watching, like this is full circle for me because I work with Tonic back when they had like some other blends, the Warrior and like, you know, some others. And, um, and you know, just even the reputation you had back then just starting out because, you know, for me, it would seem like you, you have amassed such attention in the industry where it's like you're a vet, <laughs> you know, even though if you really think about it, I mean, it'll be what, four years in, in April. Yeah. Since it's launching. Yeah. So yep. it's just like, you know, but the beauty is, is, you know, three, almost three years ago when I was um, working with you guys with, uh, with the other CBD company before prior to grassroots, um, you guys always maintain your integrity, even as a smaller company, the integrity of your products was so apparent to me, even in the conversations I was having. And what I found was that I said, you know, I want to really make sure I'm working with brands that can be um, held to certain standards, because like you said, it all starts with the education, but then you can be burned, right? Oh yeah. Definitely. So, you know what I mean? And so it was like, I was seeing that there were some major brands, I'm not gonna name them or call them out, but they have pretty packaging and they have pretty Instagram feeds. Mm-hmm. But when I was speaking with them, even their knowledge of CBD, they, they really, it wasn't there. 
Yeah. So it was like a breath of fresh air, you know, just working with you guys and, and even back then. And now it's full circle to grassroots, which really was born out of the same necessity of, you know, uh, clients coming to me asking for certain products that they would recommend outside of the product suite that I carried at the time because it was just topicals. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, I would recommend them someplace, but they would, the price would be really high for them, especially just starting out, especially not really trusting CBD. Yeah. And then it was like, they were just getting a bunch of mess or they were buying it at the gas station. And it was just like, okay, we have to really, you know, control this, yep. um, educating and control, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, that's why I love not only, you know, the backstory, but also how was something that you used? It was tried and true. It wasn't just like, you know what, we want to get into CBD. Exactly. I've always had a love for it. It's like, no, it actually worked for you. Mm -hmm. And then what I also love is how um, you and Eric kind of, you know, got together on the back end portion of this whole company so that you can really have like, you know, that farm to seed or, you know, yeah. seed to table type of product. So yeah, tell us a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say it kind of goes um, hand in hand. What you were saying is like, you know, the whole reason that we started the farm was because, you know, after, you know, that whole kind of journey that I just described um, and deciding to launch the brand and actually like sell this to people um, and actually you know, try to create something with this. I knew that, you know, for me, it was super important that every single um, ingredient that went into these products was the highest quality. Because right. when you're making a product that's meant to help people heal, that matters. It matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every single piece of the puzzle matters. So yeah. what I was having trouble with at that time was because it was such a new new industry, you know, like there was not that many options as far as who you can source from. Yeah. You know, there's only maybe about four, four or five states that were even um, able to produce CBD at that time. Yeah. It was just the wild, wild west, to, to put it lightly. Um, mm -hmm. And it's getting ripped off a lot. It was really hard to get reliable, consistent product. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really kind of had this idea to take matters into our own hands. I, I mean, love like, that. Listen, you know, we, uh, I was lucky enough, you know, that my parents had property already in upstate mm -hmm. New York, you know, it was some, uh, just somewhere that we would go on the weekends, like a weekend getaway kind of place. And, uh, you know, it was actually where Eric and I got married. A, a I saw years that. Ago. Love yeah, that. So there was already that connection there. And um, yeah, I, I just kind of brought it up to my parents, this idea of, growing our own hemp and just mm -hmm. kind of seeing like how this industry is going to be growing. I was like, you know, mm -hmm. we're, if we're going to need more supply and, you know, we can now control the quality for time yeah. and be able to supply to others and mm -hmm. this and that. And long story short, like we kind of just started to look into it at the perfect time. Um, and we were able to get our license. Yeah, you know, we really, I have to give it up for Eric, my husband, he, you know, dove headfirst into all the research and really mm -hmm. learned everything he could about becoming a hemp farmer and uh, yeah, you know, I love really, that. and he, he crushed it and you know now we just finished up our our third uh our third year on Tricola Farms. Um, Congratulations. That's Thank so you. exciting. I mean, really, because it's like, again, the type of integrity that you guys have, it can't be fate. I, you know, I say that all the time, like when, when um, Kiera, Nina and I were thinking about our founding brands that we wanted to partner with, with Grassroots, I want to say like you were one of the first or second brands that I wrote down because again, the, the authenticity comes across and it's not only just you and, you know, Eric, like interviews and whatnot I had seen with Eric Pryor, but even Mary and Haley and the rest of your team, like just that knowledge and really trying to be innovative and disruptive in the industry. Yeah. Which brings me to like Blue Bite, you know, like what other brands are like just taking it that far to say, listen, yes, we have our own farm. Yes, we are sourcing, you know, the, the product. But at the same time, this is where you can go. So you as a consumer can feel safe in your decision. Right. So tell us a little bit about the Blue Bite technology, because that's so fascinating and disruptive. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's um, it kind of just takes that kind of that QR code technology to the next level. Um, it adds an, an additional layer of um, authenticity and security to it. Mm -hmm. um, it can't be faked, can't be duplicated, can't be, can't be replicated. Mm -hmm. And it'll also tell you if the product has been tampered with at all. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you can just take any tonic product uh -huh. and tap your, phone, tap your phone right to the mm -hmm. top right here. And what will happen is that you can access so cool. not only our lab reports, like for you know the lot that, of oil that this came from, mm -hmm. the batch that it came from, but also the information about the farm and information about how it was grown that year when it was mm -hmm. harvested and information about the product itself. It'll take you to like, you know, blog posts or kind of just little mm -hmm. information drop downs about how to take it and, you know, 
kind of just stuff that you can't necessarily fit on the label. Right. So right. <laughs> it's definitely um, so important. And like, you know, like you said, it's, it would be easy for us to kind of rest on our laurels, so to speak, because right. of the fact that we do everything in house. Like, you know, we have the absolute luxury of being able to say that we know every step that, you know, this flower has taken before mm-hmm. it got to you. Like it doesn't leave our site. You know, right. we not only do we grow it ourselves, but we, we, uh, process it ourselves, extract mm-hmm. the oil ourselves, manufacture it ourselves and ship it ourselves. So, yeah. you know, it would be easy for us to say like, oh, whatever, just, you know, let's do the bare minimum when it comes to our transparency, because like, we'll just let people know that it's all in house, you know right. what I mean? Like right. kind of just like have a blanket statement like that, but I don't think that does anybody any good. And I don't think mm-hmm. it does the industry any good really, because we don't need people resting on their laurels right now. We need mm-hmm. people to be pushing things forward right. to legitimize the industry as a whole, right? Yes. Because, you know, we want people to know that we're not scared of regulation. We're mm-hmm. not, we're not pushing away the FDA. Like we're mm-hmm. actually, we want the FDA. Yes, we do. Yeah, we because want Because it is FDA. still very much wild, wild west. Exactly. You so know? with regulation comes, comes things like what you were talking about before is like, people are nervous to buy CBD products because they've heard nightmare stories where they're, they purchase, they spend eighty dollars on a bottle that doesn't even actually have CBD in it. Yeah. Like that's that's not good for anybody in this mm-hmm. industry, right? That's not good for the brands that are doing it right, especially when you're pouring your heart and soul into something. The last thing you want is a consumer just um, like right off the bat disregarding it because of like the the messed up stuff that you know these people who are in it for a quick buck are trying to do. You know, absolutely, what I mean? so they can ruin it for everybody. So we want to always take that extra step wherever we can to let people know that we're doing it right. And to let people know that like, this is this kind of standards that you should be holding brands uh, to and the kind of accountability that you should be holding them, uh, holding them to. And that's really the the biggest thing because it's all about the consumers at the end of the day. Yep. We want, we want you to trust us because this is an important product. It's not just like a t-shirt, you know what I mean? Yep. Like it's something that not only you're ingesting, but you're ingesting for therapeutic benefit. Right. You know what I mean? It's a health and wellness product. Mm-hmm. It's something that's very, important to me, um, I, you know, no, knowing firsthand the different the difference it can make mm-hmm. in your mental and physical wellness. You know, I want people to be able to trust our products mm-hmm. through and through and not never mm-hmm. have, even have a doubt that, you know, they're getting, exa- that they're not getting exactly what, you know, is stated on the bottle. There should never be a doubt in their head that that that's not the case, you know? Right. No, I just, I love everything that you're saying because that really is what the premise of, you know, grassroots is in regards to saying, hey, listen, as a consumer, you can come to us and see brands that have been vetted such as Tonic, where it's deeper than just, again, that packaging or, you know, like false promises because these consumers, that most of them that are coming into the industry now are still very novice they really don't have the education aside from what is CBD. And some of them don't even know what that is. Right. They're just hearing this buzzword everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And they think they should try it. But, you know, so so it's really about finding that safe place. Like you said, I, I absolutely love how you guys have just are raising the standard because, you know, there are unfortunately a lot of bad players in the industry who yeah. are all about the profit. And they're not about any type of social advocacy. They're not about consumers really healing through this process or getting any type of therapeutic benefits. And it's really unfortunate because again, CBD is not the cheapest type of, you know, therapeutic on the market, right? Right. Um, But it, for, you know, we feel as though it can be very, very beneficial if you get with the right, with the right brand. So, um, and that's definitely something like a big part of, you know, our kind of, our, business framework is accessibility as well. And, you know, it's definitely, you know, not the easy way to do things. Like we'd mm-hmm. like to joke that we always find like the hardest way to do things <laughs> and then we always choose that, but it's yeah. um, keeping our prices accessible mm-hmm. is really just like a, a huge part of what we believe in for that reason, because like, don't believe that that wellness is a luxury, right? Like right. And it's, it's been framed like that so much and it's been framed as something that's only for like, skinny white uh rich women you know what yeah. i mean and it's in california like, exactly mm-hmm. right and it's just like that's not that's not what this is about and that's not what the cannabis plant is about and mm-hmm. that's really kind of like our guiding light uh, mm-hmm. if you will is like our compass is always you know is are we staying true to the meaning of the plant itself right like right. the cannabis plant is so powerful it's such a, a powerful ancient medicine and it's 
all about connection, a connection to each other, connection within mm -hmm. ourselves, a connection to nature, right. healing. And it's just really such a, a powerful, uh, a powerful being in itself. And it, that's often overlooked when it's commercialized, right? When yeah. it's, um, when people start to use it as a commodity mm -hmm. um, and you start to see that very, very, very rapidly in the hemp mm -hmm. space, because, you know, with hemp, it's not like, you know, uh, with THC flower where people like a big grow would be like one acre of, of plants, right? Whereas like right. people are growing 50, 100, 200 right. acres of hemp. And basically what's happening in, in cases like that is they're cutting the plants down whole with a combine, mm -hmm. mulching it in the field and basically shooting that mulched material into like a dump truck that car that's like being towed behind the combine, right? Right. And then from there, it goes to an industrial dryer and then it's, you know, uh, extracted into the oil that are, that's on your shelves. And yeah. that's really the problem with that being like, yeah, okay. It's like a quantity over quality thing, right? Because mm -hmm. now you have all this material and maybe, yeah, you only lost like 3%, 4% CBD in the process, but you've lost all the terpenes. Yeah. You've lost the minor cannabinoid content. Mm -hmm. You've lost a lot of the beneficial kind of entourage effects type compounds right. that we know and love in a full spectrum product. Yeah. But the other part of it that people don't realize and like some people might think this is like a little woo woo but mm -hmm. hey like i truly believe it that stresses the plant the fuck out it does right? we it's, love woo woo and yeah. you're right you're yeah. absolutely right it's a very stressful process for the plant mm -hmm. and that energy is going to be transferred into the yeah. product that you're taking to relieve your stress yeah so what yeah what's the point of that right like so yeah. that's really, like truly believe handling the plant as gently and delicately as possible throughout the process does make a difference in that end product, not only in the amount of beneficial compounds that are preserved in the flower and then in the extracts, but also in the, the energy that it carries and yes. in the way that it interacts with your body. And that's that. definitely such like, a, like I said, like just our, our guiding compass is always just like, are we staying true to the plant? Are we treating the plant well? And are we kind of doing it justice? Right. Right. Yeah. No, um, you know, it's so interesting. Like I used um, one of your um, products to introduce my grandparents to CBD, you know what I mean? Because it just was like a trusted um, product. And this was even before like all this other NFC technology and whatnot. But I'm just so happy to have brands like you in the industry because we do know that as things open up more, um, there are going to be the Coca-Colas and the others that are going to come in with these, you know, billion dollar marketing budgets. And they're just going to be looking at the quantity and the, and the numbers over yeah. the quality. But hopefully we have made enough of a presence and the consumers are, are educated enough to still source out quality brands such as yours. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the goal. That's really, um, yeah. you know, we like to always compare ourselves like, you know, to the, uh, the craft beer industry, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's always going to be the Budweisers and, you know, those, that's just like about cheap and big yeah. distribution and everything like that. But then, you know, the craft beer industry is huge. There's yeah. such a, there's room for both, right? Yeah. And there's always going to be demand for both. Mm -hmm. And it's really all about educating consumers about the value of, you know, the, the craft approach over the industrial commercial approach. And Love that's it. really, um, a big focus of ours is, is that education because yeah. it's a lot about the sustainability of the industry as well. Like from what I was just describing, like those hundred acre farms and everything like that. And it's just uh, a lot of land gets turned over until unnecessarily there's like, you know, we, the last thing that we want is for the hemp industry to fall into the same traps that industrial agriculture had right. had in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Ruining our land, depleting our soil yeah. and effectively contributing to global warming rather mm -hmm. than, you know, hemp has the power to reverse that, right? right? To actually make a change for the better. So making sure that this, this industry is literally growing responsibly, right? Like mm -hmm. actually uh, cultivating responsibly and sustainably and, uh, you know, using regenerative agricultural practices, biodynamic practices is so important um, because that's really, you know, the, like I said, the last thing we want is for, you know, hemp and cannabis to turn into something that's actually bad for the environment. I know. And if anybody can do that, it's America. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say, America like, uh, you can definitely do that. So we know how to ruin a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's really about, you know, I think that we're in such an amazing time right now, as far as, you know, Gen Z consumers and yeah. millennial consumers, like actually caring about those mm -hmm. things, right? Actually caring, like, is this company 
you know, doing good for the environment. Like what's the impact of my purchase? And yep. that, those are the consumers that we want, that we love, because mm-hmm. we know that like, we can check all the boxes for them, you know what right. I mean? And like, right. there's going to be some consumers that like, and some, we've seen it, like just talking to, uh, you know, having conversations, like right, trying to raise money and stuff mm-hmm. to get like our processing lab off the ground. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've had a lot of conversations with old white dudes who are like, you're crazy. Like, you could be doing this for this much cheaper. Yeah. You, could, you know what I mean? But like, outsource to China. It. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, so like, but we know that for the consumers that we, that we want to target, like, mm-hmm. that this matters to them. And yeah. that we know that we're putting out a better product and we know that we're doing things the right way, mm-hmm. um, socially responsibly and also yeah. environmentally responsibly. Ugh, just warms my heart to hear this, um, you know, because um, the brand that you've been able, I say the reputation that you've been able to build around Tonic, um, you know, kind of with your, your hands tied behind your back. Because if you think about it, we don't have the traditional marketing means no yeah. matter how large your marketing budget is. And, and that for me um, dictates a lot of like the brands that are able to stay in the game because you and I probably know some of mutual brands that had those large marketing dollars, but still weren't connecting with the consumers right. and they are folded or got bought out or whatever have you. So for you to be, you know, started in the kitchen Mm-hmm. And now you're here. You know what I mean? Like that is just amazing. And still without like commercials on TV, Facebook ads, I mean, all those other, you know, things that we just can't do in the industry yet. So, you know, I, I love that. And that takes me to Bardo because I mean, that launched in what, March yeah. of, of 2019, right? 2020. 2020, March 2020, yeah. in the heart of a pandemic. So let's yeah. talk about, like, tell me a little bit about Bardo. Because I think it's so it's so exciting for individuals that are looking to really have sustainably sourced products. But then I want you to tell me about like launching that in the pandemic because that takes oh, yeah. a lot of guts. Oh, it was a lot of fun. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Bardo is that pretty much is like the, the last piece of our puzzle. It you know closed the loop and allowed us to be fully vertically integrated seed to sale. Um, so it's Love our it. extraction and like R and D product development. Um, part of our operation and what bardo means is uh, actually a uh, a buddhist term for like the transitional state between uh death and rebirth Mm -hmm. so we thought that it was a perfect way to describe the space that we hold in the industry uh between the plant's life and the ground Mm -hmm. and its next life as a more evolved product able to continue on that journey to healing so that's kind of what what the bardo name uh is all about and it's really like you said um, a, an effort to to bring the tonic ethos to the masses, right? And mm-hmm. because like, I think that there are a lot of brands or a lot of people like me who do honestly care about the quality of the product that they're putting out, that do honestly care about the sustainability and like the um, the kind of just the integrity of the, the partners that they're working with. And right. I think a lot of that has to do with what we were just talking about with what the consumers are demanding. Yep. Consumers are demanding better from the brands. Mm -hmm. So the brands are kind of forced to have to find partners who check those boxes. And but what we're doing with Bardo is not only supplying tonic with the the extracts and the products that we need, Mm -hmm. but we're also working with uh, brands who are aligned with our values and our vision of, you know, single origin, sustainably sourced, full spectrum extracts. And, uh, you know, now we're also uh, branching out more into the minor cannabinoids, um, being able to, you know, separate um, you know, CBC and, uh, we're also grew a lot of CBG plants on our farm this year, which we're, you know, working with yes. some CBG extracts now. And mm-hmm. we're also, you know, working on our, uh, you know, broad spectrum distillate and things like that. So that we're able to offer a, a pretty you know wide variety of products and, and extracts to, to different brands and able to, um, help them develop products. And it's been really amazing to be able to help, uh, help brands get off the ground really, because what we're working with a lot of, um, a lot of people who are just like me, like who mm-hmm. are just like I was, you know, three years ago and they're just, they, maybe they've been working in their kitchen trying to develop this or, you know, they're just trying to think like, how am I even going to get this started? It's so overwhelming. Like, mm-hmm. how am I going to afford this? And, yeah. you know, what we're doing is kind of just disrupting that usual model of super high MOQs um, and, you know, these yep. really huge, like you know, kind of huge commercial scale labs, what they usually yeah. demand from 
the brands that they work with. We're mm -hmm. offering accessible, like low uh, minimum order quantities. Love we it. are working, uh, for, like working to build long-term relationships with the brands that we're mm -hmm. working with by offering kind of lower upfront costs to get things started. And then just mm -hmm. kind of uh, making an agreement that we're just in this together, right? Like we'll oh, do whatever man. we can for you in the beginning, but once you blow up, you just got to stick. Yeah, right, right, right. So, right, right. And that's, it's, we're we family. All, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we're developing custom product and it's just like really cool to help people just bring their vision to oh, life man. and to really work through that process with them. And yeah, we're also started a, a social equity program through Bardo as well. Love so, that. you know, young women of color, people of color can uh, have even, you know, more access to the industry because so what we do is lower their upfront costs even more mm -hmm. and just kind of make it a longer term contract so that mm -hmm. way you know you're able to get your foot in the door have the mm -hmm. opportunity get going and we'll give you all the resources that we can our network our connections mm -hmm. obviously our product development you know and manufacturing mm -hmm. capabilities all of that so that way we're trying to at least level the playing field a little bit right, right? and just trying to make sure that we're contributing to an equitable industry as much as we can. My goodness. Why does it not surprise me between you and Mary? I don't know why I'm surprised, you know, would be surprised to hear about this initiative. Mm -hmm. That is amazing because listen, as a black woman, three years ago, when I started mm -hmm. my CBD company prior to grassroots, it was scary as hell. And it just wasn't, you know, as far as the clientele. And again, like everybody thought it was either it was weed Mm -hmm. Or like like some of that other um, you know just like crazy synthetic weed or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like two stuff or something. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was crazy MOQs and like just trying to really you know understand like what CBD did for me in in helping me to manage my pain after I had a botched epidural with my son and wanting to bring that to the masses. But again, it just was like those barriers to entry. So kudos to you guys because that is like amazing and um you know the field should be leveled for brands though that really align with with your energy and i have to tell you too i caught a glimpse of the time when you were um, mentioning the bardo definition it was 333 it was 333 yeah so i was like oh look at that i love it you know more that woo woo stuff oh yeah but well, um we love it but like you said the uh starting it during a pandemic was a lot of fun so our chief science officer actually he came out here from um, from Washington and it was really like he got here just in time. It was almost like he walked into the door and then like everything went into <laughs> lockdown. You know what I mean? So it was actually as like stressful as it was being mm -hmm. like, holy crap, like now our whole world has changed when we're mm -hmm. about to like launch this new part of our business and everything. It was actually kind of nice because it gave us a little bit of time to just like we kind of just locked ourselves in our facility. Like we became like this little pod with Ugh. everybody that worked here because we would all just kind that. of come to work, mm -hmm. go home to our separate homes. Like, you yeah. know, most of us would like, you know, either live alone or, you know, I work with my husband. So we go yeah. home to each other and we come yeah. back here. And uh, so we were able to kind of create this little, you know, quarantined pod together. Yeah, you had a bubble. Yeah, exactly. Very um, grateful to be able to you know, stay open during all of it. And it allowed us to really kind of just hone in on our operations at Bardo and get everything going and kind of build up a kind of a back stock of material a little bit. And then, you know, we honestly, it was surprising how many people I think were kind of trying to do the same as far as like, this is a good time for me to develop my brand. Right. Mm -hmm. And we were able to kind of get a good kind of like trickling in of, um, of clients, especially for like these longer term kind mm -hmm. of um, custom product development projects. Yay. So, you know, throughout the summer, we were really working, a lot on these um, on these contracts, and now you know it's really cool to see a lot of them start to uh, come to fruition, and a lot uh, of these brands starting to launch and uh, you know getting their products going. So it's really exciting, and I'm really um, just really grateful to be a part of so many other amazing brands now. Like yes. it's not, like not just tonic that I get to be proud of, I get to be proud all over. Yes, I mean really, I mean I'm sitting here so selfishly. I'm like, okay, great. So you're telling me there's a funnel of yeah. brands with the same tonic type of synergy, you know, I'm already thinking about grassroots, like, okay, yeah. great access, because, you know, it's all about just educating the consumer on the different types of products. It's not just vape pens and tinctures. Right. 
you know, there are a plethora and more to come that, that we haven't even, you know, come across or thought about in our industry yet, which leads me to, um, you know, again, when I first was working with Tonic, it was more so like the Warrior and the Chronic and, and OG. And then now you have like pet products and vape pens and, you know, talk to us a little bit about where you you see yourself going or some of the, you know, newest products out that you're excited about. Yeah. So we, uh... Definitely, like you said, our kind of flagship products were the the tinctures, um, you know, these adaptogenic tinctures and um, our roll-on topical, but now we have our pre-roll flowers and um, our vape pen, dog treats. And, you know, we also have uh, the chocolate bars on our website, which are amazing. Yes. They actually use CBD that is sourced from Chipola Farms flower, Bardo mm-hmm. Extract. So mm-hmm. that's one of our, our partner brands. But mm-hmm. what I'm really excited about is what we have coming up in just a couple weeks, fingers crossed, like okay. beginning of December, mm-hmm. uh, and that we are going to be launching our skincare line. So we're going to be kind of is like- Is this a, an exclusive? Oh yeah. You heard it here first, folks, but <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. So yeah, it's um actually going to be kind of like a, a sub brand under the tonic brand. And it's uh this actually is an exclusive right here. Oh. I haven't announced this yet. It's called Outer Space. Love it. Love it. But uh, (laughs) so outer space, universal skincare by Tonic. Uh, We're going to be launching our facial oil first, our renewal oil, which is really amazing. I've Mm -hmm. been um, using it for, you know, the past couple months. And, um, you know, I have always had issues with uh, with my skin, like acne scarring and Mm -hmm. discoloration and things like that. And it's been really amazing. We've had a lot of uh, positive feedback from it. So I'm super excited to get that out. And then we'll be launching a uh, body butter not too long after. Yeah. Well, I am so excited because I know those products are going to be amazing. And I'm already, again, thinking about what box can we put some samples in and like a little, you know, skincare box. But that is awesome because it's like your full spectrum. And, and the beauty is that when somebody loves Tonic as a brand, then it's like everything they think they need related to CBD, they're just there. Yeah. You know, like I don't even have to question where I have to get my topicals here. I have to get my skincare there, you know, body butters here, bath bombs here, like bait pens, pet products. It's like, no, we yeah. got you covered. Like bring it in all together. And that's, yes, yeah, you, you nailed it on the head right there. That's exactly what we're trying to do is like, mm-hmm. you know, be able to offer a variety because people use CBD in all different ways, um, you know, and it's, it's needed for so many different things and can mm-hmm. be applied in so many different ways. But, you know, you always run the risk of, you know, especially with like the beauty industry, like, I'll, I'll, I won't lie, like it took us a while to, you know, we've been kind of developing this product for a very long time because I wanted to be very careful of not just rushing into something to try to cash in on the right. CBD beauty craze, right? right. Uh, because CBD and this product, um, the facial oil that we're launching, it also has CBC in it, which is an amazing um, anti-acne agent. Um, it's really mm. amazing anti-inflammatory and anti-acne. So I really wanted to make sure that I was consciously crafting this product, just like I did every other product that, mm-hmm. that we create um, and making sure that this can stand the test of time, that it's actually going to work, that it's mm-hmm. actually, you know, not just like I said, kind of banking on the, on just putting CBD on the label and right. hoping people will, will buy it because of that. Right. It's right. really, you know, and that's, that's, again, the big thing is that like, the brands that do do that, Mm -hmm. they ruin it for the rest of us. Right. So like the more that we can kind of control that messaging and make Mm -hmm. sure that every product that people try and every kind of different application of CBD that people try in their lives will yield a positive result and will um, really kind of just work the way it's supposed to work because Mm -hmm. CBD really is great for skin. Cannabinoids are great for skin, but when it's just in there in a tiny, tiny amount and it has other stuff in it, that's not high quality. Right. You're not going to get the great results. right? Right. So like it's really just making sure that we can help people use cannabinoids in whichever way that they need to, to, you know, help themselves heal and making sure that we're doing that in a way that's high quality and sticking to, you know, the, the tonic ethos. Yes. I, I love it. I love it. This is, this is amazing. And um, I'm so here for it because, you know, even think myself with like wearing the mask and like, oh, you yeah. know, all of that stuff with the skincare um, mm-hmm. and the CB, CBC and the CBNs and the CBGs, like it's all exciting because this industry is so young, even though I, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been in it forever, but it's like, you know, just kind of understanding, yeah. like we all are in this or brands such as ourselves, like, 
like in this for the long term. Yeah. Like we want to see what this looks like 10, 20, 30 years down the road versus just trying to get in and get bought out. Right. Exactly. So I'm really excited to see how your products evolve. Um, yeah. So, you know, I love everything about Tonic and Tricola, but now I want to know about Brittany, the woman. So <laughs> in regards to you, like, tell us what is like one of your favorite self-care practices? I. Uh, I would have to say, besides taking CBD, yeah. <laughs> uh, is my morning meditations. Um, every morning, wow. I meditate for at least 15 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. And that has, a, it's a fairly new uh, kind of self-care ritual that mm-hmm. I've started probably really just about a year ago. Mm-hmm. I think I, I started to um, to really put work this into my routine. And it has been uh, a lifesaver, honestly, yeah. because it's just so easy to kind of wake up and start your day with yes. getting caught up in all of the madness all around mm-hmm. you, right? So just like having that little bit of that grounding moment of mindfulness and just silence and just focusing on setting my mind straight for the day ahead mm-hmm. is so huge. Um, you know, especially being somebody who is very prone to anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and, you know, even more so, I think, you know, depression can, I think, you know, for me at least sneaks up on me in the morning. And uh, yeah. like definitely like there's just days where, you just don't want to get overwhelmed. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's almost like paralyzing. You don't want to get out of bed. And, you know, I've, I faced that a lot and especially Mm -hmm. as a business owner being overwhelmed by everything and Mm -hmm. constant, just, you know, things up in the air and constant stress. I was dealing with that a lot and it was really being able to change the way I was starting my days and change the way that I was talking to myself Mm -hmm. starting the days, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Changing that internal dialogue and changing it from like, I'm not enough to like, I can, and I will. I'm really yes. on that and like really kind of harness that energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that's been such a, a huge, um, a huge kind of win in my, my self-care routine for sure. Um, ah. that's something that's helped a lot. I love that. Think about what you're thinking about. Yeah. Like that yeah. is awesome. And, you know, hopefully that resonates with someone that is watching this, that has been feeling overwhelmed or down in the morning or throughout their day. And just, you know, to maybe pick that up meditation has really been powerful for me too. So, well, I am so excited. I'm so grateful for you and your time and um, just sharing with us today. I'm really, really excited about having that skincare exclusive. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. I'm we're hitting you up after this to get yeah. your, your shipping address so I can get you that sample. For yes. Sure. <laughs> well, we will email that out. But, but again, I'm grateful for your time. Thank you so, so much. And it really has been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was really great to uh, be able to share my story with you and, and your audience. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support. I really can't tell you how much it means. Yes, thank you. And we're going to have to, the ladies and I are going to have to make a trip up and uh, oh, to yeah. Chocola and uh, see the farm in, in person. So Absolutely. we're excited about that. Anytime you want, open door policy. Thank you. I will take you up on that. Well, wonderful. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay, you too. Bye.